Hi, welcome to another episode of Vivid Aquariums TV. I'm Dave, and today I'm going to talk to you about plumbing parts that you'd use in plumbing an aquarium. Look at this video as a prerequisite to future plumbing videos to come. Now let's get started. All right, when plumbing a saltwater aquarium, there's three major types of fittings you're going to encounter. One is a barb fitting. With this, you use clear tubing, and you'll have to push that tubing over the barb fitting, like so. Use your muscles, and then put a clamp on there. Use a plastic clamp, something that won't rust or corrode in the salt water, and you'll tighten this with clamps, now, or with pliers, sorry. Now, you also have a threaded fitting. A threaded fitting, for instance, can screw into a bulkhead or another threaded fitting. And then you have slip fittings. Slip fittings, you would use PVC glue and glue the pipe in. Now, I must say, with thread fittings, you need to use Teflon tape or glue. If you glue them, it's a much more secure connection, but it's something that you can never take apart again. With Teflon tape, you absolutely can take it apart. You want to thread it on the Teflon tape onto the threads counterclockwise. That way, when you tighten it into the fitting, the tape wants to stay on. So you put the Teflon tape, usually about three to four wraps. You'll tighten that into the fitting, nice and tight and solid. And then that's a secure fitting that won't leak. Now, we have a bunch of different parts here. I'm going to go through them with you and tell you the purpose. Starting here is a ball valve. This allows you to either turn on or off flow. And also, if you had it on a pump, you could actually turn it part way to reduce the flow. If the pump was slightly too strong, you could turn it down a little bit. Nice feature, important to have. Also, we have gate valves. This does the same thing as a ball valve in terms of allowing you to turn on or off a pipe. But this allows you to make very fine adjustments by just turning it slightly. So if you're adjusting this, the feed into a protein skimmer or into a media reactor, a gate valve is preferable because you can make very fine adjustments to it. Now we have check valves. Whenever you plumb water from a sump into the aquarium, you risk, if there's a power outage, having that water siphon back down and flooding your sump. A check valve has a flapper inside of it, basically, that will stay open as water pumps up into your tank, but if you had a power outage, that flapper will close and prevent water from siphoning back down and flooding your sump. Very important. Now, this kind of check valve is clear, and it actually has a union on each end, so you can unscrew the end to replace this center part about once a year, because that flapper does go bad over time. This is the kind of check valve we prefer here. You can find the white PVC check valves, but with them, the flapper's in there, it works every bit as well, but replacing it means you have to cut the plumbing and glue new fittings in. So the union one, definitely a lot easier to use. Now, this is a union by itself. The union basically allows you to separate parts of plumbing. For instance, if I had these two pipes and I want to be able to take them apart and put them back together without cutting and gluing every time, you can just unscrew it, pull them apart, service the pump or whatever you connect to it, and screw it back on nice and tight and you're back in business without gluing and cutting pipe. Makes life a lot easier. Here we have a coupling. A coupling is used similar to how a union is, except it just allows you to join two pieces of pipe together. And you glue these fittings in with PVC glue. Recommend a clear glue, uh, PVC glue from Home Depot. Now, a lot of people use primer. I've never had running this business because aquarium plumbing has a very low PSI and that purple or blue primer all over the place dripping makes for some ugly plumbing. So keep it clear, it'll look a lot better. Back to the coupling. That allows you to join two pieces of pipe. Now, there's another type of coupling here which accepts a slip fitting on one side and a threaded fitting on the other. Basically an adapter. It allows you to convert slip fittings to threaded fittings. You can also get an elbow which will do the same thing in case you need to make a bend in the plumbing as you convert it. Next fitting here is a T. This is great if you wanted to T off of your return pump to feed to create two different return lines or to send one to a tank and one to a media reactor or chiller. We also have 45 degree angles, again just to angle the plumbing around, make it fit. We have a standard 90 degree elbow. This is great, uh, useful, you're going to use it in most setups just to create a bend. This standard degree elbow is a little different from this street elbow. A street elbow basically will fit, slip nice and tight in. This is great for saving space if you don't have a lot of space, say inside an overflow box or down in your cabinet where you're running out of room. 
With a standard elbow, you'd need to actually glue a piece of pipe in with PVC glue and then glue the fitting onto it. While you could get them to meet exactly, you're not gonna, it's going to take up more space than using the street elbow. We also have what's called a threaded street elbow. This is great, for instance, if you need to thread into a bulkhead. You could thread it in like that. Of course, use Teflon tape. That saves you a lot of space versus having to do something like a male adapter, which I have here somewhere. Somewhere. Too many parts. There's a male adapter. So obviously doing this and this is going to take up a lot more space than just doing that. Um, we also have bushings or reducers. For instance, if I needed to take a one inch pipe and connect a three quarter inch pipe to it, well, that doesn't work so well. So what we do is we put a bushing in there. This is a bushing that reduces one inch to three quarters. And then I can glue in my three quarter pipe, thus converting to a smaller size pipe. Bushings come in all different sizes and convert to whatever size you need. Bushings come in all different sizes, and basically you just need to get the reducer bushing to convert your larger pipe down to the smaller pipe so it'll all glue together. Also, we have lock line. Lock line is flexible, and this is used for return lines into the aquarium. You have a threaded fitting on one end, which will screw into your bulkhead. Remember, your tank wall is right there. And then you can actually aim it and aim the return into your tank nice and sleek. And on the end of the lock line, you have a flare. And on the beginning of it, you have a threaded adapter. It's called an MTP adapter. So there you have it. I guess, remember, stick with the clear glue. Keeps things a lot neater. And I hope this has been helpful to you. Good luck, plumbing guys. And uh, we'll have more videos to come to show you more about how to actually put stuff together. Thanks.